I know that the weather is getting a little bit cold. So uh, on behalf of the CHT, I'm the vice chairman uh, this year. So I'm Gordon, if you haven't met me before. So we are very happy that we have uh, Thomas here to give us a presentation on a very, uh, I think it's a very useful topic. Uh, uh, I actually have heard about this in uh, various places like in Australia and stuff like that. But uh, Thomas is a very experienced uh, guy. We talk about that in Hong Kong. Uh, so it's the UAS and LIDAR system. Okay, so uh, I hope that everybody can get something useful tonight uh, from the insights from uh, Thomas. Okay, so uh, you enjoy that. So uh, I do not have to do much introduction for Thomas. Uh, you can see all here. <laughs> okay, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay, so probably Thomas, we can invite him to give us a talk on that next year. Okay, okay. okay so uh, probably I pass the time to, to Thomas. Okay, so shall we give a big clap? Uh, to Thank you very much for your coming. Uh, I'm Thomas Lee, uh, the speaker of tonight's uh, lecture. I guess quite lecture, right? CPD. Uh, in actual fact, I'm a, a lecturer uh, in uh, Hong Kong University, uh, teaching the master degree course on GIS, geographical information system. And and as just now Gordon explained, I'm also a feng shui master, but scientifically uh, analyzed the uh, location and our location. Uh, to you. And I myself is a charter land surveyor, so that's why I have this uh, new technology that I can share with you. Um, most probably, most uh, people may be able to do a drum fry, right? Uh, you can see the, the drum flying everywhere in Hong Kong, uh, taking good picture for, for example, weathering, right? Photography. But what I'm talking today is for professional use of the drum and able to make maps, and not only 2D maps, but 3D maps. And the result is normally is a called 3D point cloud. Uh, it can also be uh, created by called laser scanning, or called LIDAR in here. Uh, my background, as I explained that I'm a surveyor, I'm also a uh, chairperson of assessor, assessor panel in the RICS, and I've been a former lecturer in in Hong Kong U, Hong Kong Poly U, teaching GIS and also a GPS. And GPS is uh, created by US. Nowadays, the, the name change is changed to called GNSS, Global Navigation Satellite System. So if you want to upgrade yourself, uh, don't call it GPS. Even your iPhone is not called GPS, it's called GNSS chipset. And, and then I specialize in uh, remote sensing. Uh, meaning that I use satellite image to do analysis for land use cover all over the world. I also did a lot of core digital photometry, which is the main topic today in the UAV uh, 3D survey. And, and my company got a, a three, few million uh, Hong Kong funding uh, to create a core unmanned topographic mapping and 3D documentation system about three years ago. And the result is what I'm talking today. And in the recent year, uh, I also got another uh, funding from the Hong Kong government, representing the Hong Kong Institute of Surveyor uh, to visit four countries, including the China, uh, in the Belt and Road Initiative. And I will go to uh, Sri Lanka and other two countries. I will go to Pakistan uh, in next month to share the same uh, technology that you, you are going to know today, to tonight. Okay, uh, what, what about this technology? It's about uh, the 3D mapping and survey technology that able to use in many different applications. Uh, because I'm not uh, your professional, maybe what I'm sharing today, you give me uh, some comments so that I can improve myself. Uh, the first application I want to share to you is uh, typhoon flooding at the street level. The Hato uh, attacked uh, Macau in August uh, last year, and the newspaper reporter asked me to give an article writing on the 3D model that we created for the Macau, and we were able to uh, simulate the flooding at this particular street, which have uh, uh, serious uh, flooding up to the 4 meter water level. 
And from the technology that we create, the smart city or 3D model of Macau, we're able to predict this uh, Hang street exactly uh, what happened in that date. So it's a very good uh, code engineering simulation based on this precise uh, 3D modeling. Because the modeling able to uh, measure down to centimeter level accuracy per spot height uh, and per street, per building, and per even tree height. So it's very astonishing technology in the recent uh, global uh, surveying uh, industry. Uh, another uh, application or by chance I uh, help uh, to find a paraglider pilot uh, in about three months ago and we use uh, the drone to survey the area and assist them to, to do the rescue. So I, I started with uh, why we, I'm started to doing this because uh, traditional uh, land surveying will use an instrument like this uh, on a tripod, we call it a uh, total station. We are only able to measure angle and distance per point, and each day we may be able to measure about 500 points, that's all. And then we can create a topographic survey map after maybe a week or maybe a month's work. It's very time consuming, and we need a group of people to do it uh, point by point. However, if we use uh, Area photograph, uh, we, we, we have this technology in NASA Bay. It's called uh, traditional vertical photogrammetry. Uh, photogrammetry means uh, you can do measurement by photograph. Uh, at the left hand side, you can see before the back feeling uh, near the Victoria Park is the new construction, right? It's already almost finished now. And you can see the traditional photograph is quite poor or not very clear. But the right hand side, we use the UAS, uh, the amended area system that's been drawn. We can see very clear picture and able to zoom in very high precision and understand the construction site. If we do the same in the Chimsatra Sky 100, you can uh, find that the traditional area photograph taken by airplane uh, have like a skier problem on the original photograph. But using our new uh, drone technology, we can uh, ratify the skier, uh, the tilted uh, building, and we're able to make a orthogonal projection on that building, so that uh, the shadow part or the uh, the part that covered by the skier uh, building can be uh, reviewed, and you can see the ground uh, at the background. In actual fact, is a, a car park turn turn around and you will know uh, how the transport or uh, infrastructure was built in that area. Another example is uh, the Brownfield uh, survey. The left hand side is satellite image at about 0.3 meter accuracy. You can see uh, most of them in example of Google Map or Google Earth, but the resolution has this uh, limitation. And for other uh, international treaty or security purpose, uh, satellite image cannot be higher than about 0.2 or 0.3. Otherwise, uh, a lot of uh, privacy or military uh, secret will be revealed. Um, but if you're using UAV uh, locally, you can achieve uh, an accuracy down to about 5 cm at the right hand side. And you can know the material of the brownfield and able to justify whether it's really a brownfield or it's a useful uh, construction site material a user by maybe quality surveyor or maybe as 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 as, as your professional for a transport uh, engineer or a traffic engineer to to do a planning purpose and you can see a lot of uh, uh, dumped car in here and there's a building here there's trees here and a lot of construction material or waste uh, put over there so we here compare the technology uh, between the satellite image and our uh, UAV technology. Uh, we can now able to map down to one centimeter on ground. So it's very, very precise. And because the data is so different from previous technology, uh, many software are now invented internationally. Uh, those satellite image uh, analysis software now cannot able to manage our data. 
we need to use a totally new technology to do our analysis behind. The logic behind uh, is that uh, we fly the drone over the city in a regular basis uh, at the defined flight path. You can see the flight path here in Taiwan, uh, where my office is. Uh, and you can see it's a zigzag flight and very dense uh, point. Each point is one photograph. Uh -huh. And then we collect about, say, about 500 uh, photograph per kilometer square. And we did a lot in Hong Kong, a lot of research and real job. And this is a partial coverage. You can see the whole Hong Kong Island, the northern part, has been surveyed and rebuilt in a, as a 3D model. And this is not the most updated uh, status. We almost cover the whole country now. And by law in Hong Kong, if uh, someone employed me to do this uh, air survey, uh, I need to apply a course CAD permit, permit to fly the civil aviation department, civil aviation department. The technology behind, as I explained, is called photogrammetry. It's a sign of making measurement from photographs. And the photograph should be taken by a calibrated camera. Uh, in our professional, we normally use called metro camera. But a real professional metro camera is very expensive. It costs about maybe uh, 3 million Hong Kong, in compare to maybe 10,000 uh, UAV, small UAV, you can buy in the consumer market. So we are uh, moving to that direction now, using a uh, pro-consumer product to achieve a professional survey. So the cost uh, justification is very, very high. The cost efficiency is extremely high than traditional land surveying technology. And the position can be measured in XYZ, that's 3D, not only the position, but also the height of each point you can see from the aerial view. And we can also measure distance between two points in 3D, area, even the boiler. And it's much higher than we use it uh, the traditional method. So we can do stockpile volume, cut and fill, or diagram, profile highways and road design. The first product we usually produce is called an uh, awful photograph. That means um, the photograph was rectified and all the tilted or steered uh, building will be rectified orthogonally. So you can see the, the right hand side here is the China Bank, which is very high, it's about 300 meters high, but it's the dense here because we rectify the photograph per pixel level. So each pixel, we, we calculate the exact position and the height so that if the camera model already have the perspective uh, or we call it um, carefree error, um, all the pixels will be rectified exactly on top of this original position. So the whole building will be uh, rectified in, in the true scale, true position without error of tilting or skill. And because uh, it's a very low flight uh, UAV photograph, you can see the, the car, the traffic. Uh, you can know how many taxi over there. Is it a traffic tram? Uh, how many cars per lane? Is it a truck or uh, heavy uh, uh, loading vehicle? Or is it just a uh, seven or, or small car? It all can be uh, identified by the photograph. Not only the traffic, but uh, the nearby green information like the tree, the forest, the shrub on the grass end, all can be surveyed or detected in the program. Here is an application that uh, quite near your professional is called pedestrian management and traffic analysis. Um, it's almost like an AI approach. We detect uh, how many cars on the road in different types, like vehicle protects, car, minibus, or bus, in different categories. So you're able to uh, estimate the traffic loading per street, and even per junction, and per hour. Maybe uh, morning hours is uh, more car, uh, what about from 10 to 11, maybe it's less cars, all can be studied in that way. And you can also uh, able to uh, find out that this is a car park here, 
However, this car park is uh, not on the street level, it's in the podium level, and it also can be uh, detected by the aerial view. But you're never able to do it uh, on road or on, on, on the field because it cannot be accessed over there. So another breakthrough is that uh, we can able to detect anything is not accessible in the past or in history even. And we can detect it from, from the top view. And you can um, able to take we call it uh, the big data data. Uh, it's called spatial big data, not normal data. It's called spatial data analysis. It's very powerful. And additionally, uh, we have done the uh, people flow in the pedestrian level. This is the people are uh, moving in here and across the street, and we can detect in here. And there's not much people in the whole lower part, particularly because uh, this building was demolished. It's a multi storage uh, uh, car park building in the Mary Road. And most of people are using the bridge to do this. And it also explained that there's a limitation on this technology. Everything covered uh, cannot be detected. In uh, Xiang uh, you can find the Shen Duck Center, right? And you count, you can count how many taxi is waiting to get into the Shen Duck uh, Center because the queue is too too heavy over there, so they park over there. And you even know the distance from this point to, to the entry. And whether it's a double yellow line or a single yellow line can be revealed in the, in the UAV technology. So it's very, very useful information detection technology nowadays. And you can find out how many bus are waiting over there. It may be good for the bus uh, company to do their internal analysis of that. And how many footbridge connected to this site. There's another uh, application, uh, very, very high uh, resolution, uh, also using the UAV, but within a construction site. Uh, the reason to have this project is that the grid line, the designed grid line in the, con in the construction of this building, uh, needed to be checked by independent surveyor, that's me. And the client do not have uh, enough budget. I keep having question every day. Oh, my client said, Thomas, uh, give me a discount. Okay, if you're five day work, please do it one day. So save my, save my money. So how can I do it by traditional method? It's no way, right? So we need to think about how to break, uh, break through our, our um, workflow. So we use a drum instead. And the boss is very kind of me. And he said, oh, let, let's try it. Because it's a first try in construction site. So we uh, use the uh, drum to fly uh, during the lunch time because uh, nobody there in order to minimize the, the risk and uh, we are able to produce a uh, millimeter level accuracy surveying uh, to detect whether the grid line is uh, truly aligned with the design on the ground and um, you can see the millimeter level detection 12 meter 1 mm we also uh, double track with our total station we use a tripod and have an instrument to random check this error is matching exactly the same. So it's really a breakthrough. Even um, my land surveying uh, institute are challenging me whether it's really right or wrong. Of course, it's, it's true because I have the call Woodman Square uh, error report uh, to show them uh, what about the accuracy and it's totally compliant with our uh, code practice. It's the same project site, uh, but we take the photograph uh, one month after, and you can uh, find out the differences between the, the pipe uh, layout on, on the ground here. And we also put the whole design drawing on top, so that you understand uh, the progress of the construction and the differences between them. Uh, not, not only in terms of uh, visualization, but we're able to measure the dimension the orientation uh, of the uh, construction. My first question on this uh, photograph is it, why is like a V-shape? It's not parallel. They say that they are tailor-made for that design, so it's not wrong. So we can uh, we confirm the special design in, in the project. Um, 
this example is interesting. It's not by the drone. Uh, it's basically by the the main the core technology behind score photogrammetry. Because we cannot find the drone inside the underground utility. This is a, a box cover. Uh, not a box, sorry. Uh, half of it is a box, uh, like this uh, box cover. Uh, but it's, uh, it's cylindrical. Uh, it's a tube, right? Survey. And what we need to do is uh, we need to survey the whole alignment under the ground. It's about uh, 5 meters down to the ground. And the first manhole is a uh, circular manhole. And then uh, it goes down about uh, 150 meters away from the first manhole. And then we climb up from this uh, square manhole of it. And the height difference is about 30 meters. And this is a result. But uh, this is uh, from the top view. But, but from the top view, this is a building over there, and there's a manhole, uh, sorry, a man-made uh, slope. But you cannot see that because uh, we are taking the photograph inside this cover. And then we create this 3D model. And the result is an alignment of this uh, underground utility. So it's a manhole here, and it goes down 5 meters uh, from the ground level, and then turn left, go straight, turn right, go straight, and then turn left, and then we come out from this uh, uh, manhole. The purpose to uh, do this survey is that uh, the formation work is there and they are going to have um, the piping work um, but the building department uh, refused to grant them the building permit to do this work it, unless they can map out this uh, main uh, stormwater pipe before the construction and they asked a lot of land surveyor and no one able to survey it because uh, we have a techno technology called UU survey, underground UT survey, using radar. But we are only able to penetrate about one meter or maybe two meters at most. But it's already five meter, and this is not metallic uh, object. So we cannot detect by the traditional method. And there's no other method except you get you there in a confined space using our normal surveying instrument. But the cover is uh, very low. It's about 1.3 meter. So it's almost at my chest height. So we cannot put the tripod in and then do the surveying traditionally. So the only way is uh, use a new method. So we use a core photogram photogrammetry method. We take about 1,000 photographs in order to reconstruct it. It takes me about one month to do this R&D in order to achieve the accuracy down to about seven millimeter from the first set of control point. You can see marked up along the manhole, and we mark other control point at the end of the manhole, one just 30 meters away, and in 3D. So we can able to make this map, and then they submit to the BD, the BD agree that because it's signed by a charter surveyor, that's me. So they ground the permit. This on hold about, they told me about six months. After finishing, the Hong Kong Society Vice Chairman invite me to give a talk like this on how I can do it. Oh. And behind the technology I explained is that uh, we use uh, multiple uh, photographs, each of them forming a stereo model. A stereo model means uh, you, you have left and right eyes, right? You have the perception of depth and height and stereo. Why? Because uh, there's two photographs in your brain. I mean, two image, left eyes and right eye image. We replicated by using a lot of photograph. So each two of these photograph, pair of photograph, will form a core stereo pair model. And because it's multiple uh, 3D model, so we can have a very precise geometric calculation of each pixel on the photograph. And each pixel will form a point on the 3D space. So we collect all the point, it becomes called 3D point cloud. It's too much depth. It's like uh, you can see a cloud on the sky, but it's a water drop right, on, on the air. So it replicates that concept. And each time we have about 1 million points, at least, or maybe 10 million points. Recently, we have 100 million points in one project. So it's very, very, very big data. We call it really big data. You can see the result here is say the density of the point per square meter is 15,000. 
per meter square. In traditional land surveying, we only measure one point per 25 meter square. So each five meter, I give you one spot height if this is a level level area. Of course, if there's a sudden change, we may add one more point. It, it will not say per meter we have one point. But I have more than per meter one point here. I have 15,000 points per meter. And the precision in some project we found is a 1 mm on XY and 0.2 meter in C. Uh, this is a uh, mathematical calculation. And all we conform to the Hong Kong uh, called 1918 grid. It's a less relevant uh, standard. And the value, uh, the, the elevation is uh, the principal data, MPD. Uh, just now that result is about the project I show you and, and the construction site. I just zoom in and you can see the ground level is 20.534 down to millimeter and the basement is about 2 meter low. And we can exactly measure it without getting to that uh, 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 ba uh, basement. Uh, there's a ladder there, right? The, the worker needs the ladder to get down. But we use UAV and we, we can know that. And you can see the wall top is 21.6, so it's a 1.1 meter high from the ground. So everything in the construction site we can model by one single visit of survey. And everything is 3D, so we can use it uh, to build the BIM. We call it uh, existing BIM or as build BIM. And there's a really new topic because the whole BIM in the world is talking about a design BIM a design object, that is the building, the design building in form of 3D. But they haven't uh, tackled this problem about as build BIM or existing BIM problem. And it's going to be solved by this uh, 3D serving technology. And as I say, uh, one of the technology we use is called drone or UAV technology survey. And another one is called LiDAR. LiDAR is an instrument that able to uh, emit um, late laser lights and then we turn to the instrument able to measure the, the position uh, very high precision down to about 2 millimeter now the, the left hand side is a point count scanner it's just point some type of bell color and one can be use it uh, can use it to, to build a rabbit a rabbit model rabbit is a Autodesk software name okay and able to do rendering after, after that as a color model. Here is uh, another example. Uh, not only able to create a 3D model, but also able to uh, categorize the features, like the blue maybe uh, related to the water piping. Uh, the purpose, the purple is the, uh, the structure, right? So you can classify in different group of information and do your analysis. Another application is uh, we can use it to do a tree survey. Um, a lot of people think that tree is not so uh, important in our city, but no. But after about, um, say, 10 years before, um, a young girl died in, in the Stanley uh, about the tree valley. And the government uh, have a new office called uh, Tree Management Office. Uh, control all the trees away in Hong Kong. Uh, not only a point to represent a tree, we need a 3D model to represent a tree. In order to trim any branch of the tree, uh, all the consultant and contractor need to write a report to justify it per branch or even per leaf, even at that work. Why? Because uh, engineer, contractor, uh, developer asking me to survey a tree like this and then draw up the crown shape the branch and the stem in a, a centimeter or millimeter level. You can see the point count plot is 1 to 550. Normally, when we do survey in Hong Kong or construction project, we are using 1 to 200 map scale. It's very good enough. And the accuracy requirement is about just 20, uh, 2 cm or 20, meter, 20 millimeter. But for this case, uh, we need to enlarge it to uh, 4 times higher. So we are talking about, say, uh, 5 millimeter accuracy in this measurement. 
We are using a 2 mm accuracy uh, laser scanner to do it. 3D required not only a tree, a road, but the whole city block. You can see here is a 3D model of Xianghua. But you can't distinguish whether Thomas is cheating or not, right? It's just like an aerial photograph taken high up from the sky. But uh, it's really a 3D model, and I will show you a, a video later on that. You can see the, the Black Garden, the King George V part over there. To prove that this is a really 3D model, I put the model on uh, a digital map base on the top part, top half part, and then I draw a line there and ask the, my computer request a uh, system called Vision System and do a city profile uh, at the bottom. And then we, we are testing in different height level which building is higher than that level. And we can see the uh, true uh, city profile. By using this, uh, we know the, whether the, the building is uh, able to see uh, the sea view or you are buying a property that you cannot see the sea view or garden view or mountain view. This uh, affects the price of that property. Particular, the, the property price is really, really high in Hong Kong. We talk about maybe uh, 600 million per apartment in, in, a, in the middle level. Uh, here is uh, one example to show what about feng shui analysis. Uh, a lot of people understand that Hong Kong people uh, are interested in feng shui, right? It's a cultural uh, heritage, I would call it. It's a culture that whether your living place is good uh, or not. Uh, how could they say that it's good fortune, you get uh, more money, uh, you have a good lover, uh, good family, that kind of belief. It's just a belief, okay? But basically, um, it's talking about whether the slope is good or not. If it's a good slope, in Hong Kong, under GEO, the CDD standard, is uh, any slope higher than 30 degrees, they will call it a high risk uh, with landslide potential. But all depend on other factors. But the angle is the first factor uh, classified whether it should be uh, mitigate or it should be uh, closely monitored. Okay, so the, the, the analysis behind is mainly about the slope, whether the slope is too high or low. There's a Chinese statement, but I cannot translate English. It's something like this: "This Chang Tao Mat Ha, Xu Mei Yao Qin." Okay, I translate in English. It means it's it's a saw, <coughs> it's too sharp or too thin. That means the mountain range is uh, quite weak, easy to be eroded. And the second is the the mice, uh, the, the tail of the mice or the mouse was also very thin and, and able to uh, disconstruct by, by wind erosion or water erosion. So in Chinese, uh, they are very poetic to use a beautiful uh, Chinese term to describe the terrain or we call it geomorphology uh, in, in, in Chinese in, in, a, in a poetic way. And it's so difficult to understand. So that's why I spent my last 30 years to study and then transform, or able to explain to you in a scientific term. So it's a, it's a good uh, research topic. I'm looking for a PhD student to uh, follow me, if someone like this idea. Okay, here is uh, a film quality production of a city model in 3D. It's a 3D model. Again, uh, Thomas didn't cheat you, say this is a, a photograph. We took about, about maybe a thousand photographs in this area and then we construct this uh, building, uh, this building uh, in 3D. You can see the facade is uh, really beautiful and in scale, of course. We also try to apply it in uh, geodetic uh, uh, rock slope mapping. Uh, this is uh, a typical uh, rock slope in Hanbachi near my office. And you can see the there, there's uh, artificial cuts, and there's a uh, berm over there, and there's uh, a U, U channel on that, and we can measure. When we zoom in, uh, it's not, just now it's not a picture, sorry. It's a 3D point cloud. So many points, so dense that you cannot see any hole. It's just like normal photograph, right? When you zoom in, you get a pixel. But I do not have a pixel here. I have the point, but it's too many so that you cannot see whether it's full graph or a 3D point graph. So I zoom in, 
you can see the dots there, right? There's a space between uh, the port. The original port have color, the green color, uh, white color, the, the rock right, surface color, and, and the crack, or, or we can draw a drawn, the linear one. And we can measure on this 3D model using a software called uh, Quick Terrain Modeler, which was uh, only used by a US uh, defense department, but now uh, be become a commercial product. I'm selling it. And we use it to measure the output, the direction of the crack and uh, the elevation angle of it from to, so it's deep down uh, 50, uh, 58 degrees. And we also know the 3D vector length is 4.425 based on the point count. We fly the UAV on top and then have the multiple photograph, stereo model, and then create a video point count, and then put in this software and then do the measurement. The third part is uh, LiDAR. The full name is uh, Light Detection and the Ranging uh, Instrument. It is able to send the LiDAR uh, signal to any object and return and based on the, the time travel and we know the distance of that point. Of course, the angle of measurement also included. And not only put it on a tripod, we now put it in a UAV. So it's a flying laser scan. And also we put a car so that it's moving around the city and scan everything all, along the street. All the street furniture, all the road mark, everything can be measured and including the, the camera inside. So all the photograph will be taken, matching with the 3D point cloud. So when you open the file, you get the original photo, like the street view in the Google Street View, but also measure any object behind the program down to a millimeter level or a centimeter level. Then you cannot see the whole uh, project site. You use a UAV and do the same thing on the air. So you have the sky view, the street view, or even, as I say, the ship view, because you can put on the ship. Okay, here is a photograph. Okay. It's no, no 3D point cloud yet, okay, photograph. Next, it's a point cloud. See again, photograph, point cloud. They're all the same, right? So nowadays, if you see a photograph, you need to ask yourself whether it's Thomas 3D point cloud or even a photograph, because it cannot be distinguished by a uh, native eye now. And you can, you can find that the dimension of the footprint at the left hand side, 1.581 down to millimeter level. And 1.872, I think, is the height of the canopy. And then the, the length of the of the hut, okay, or house over. If we can see the tree over there, right? You, you can measure the diameter of, of the tree trunk. And even the lift on the air, you, you can measure it. So everything can be scanned out and can be measured using the point count and have our 3D world. I have a slogan saying that uh, nowadays we can able to copy and paste the real world into the computer world now. Even yourself, a human being, can be scanned now using my scanner and then put it in the computer to create your own avatar, okay, your, represent, your digital representation in a computer. Here is another example in the mirror road. Uh, there's a tree there, the footbridge, the road, and the construction site behind. We also did it in uh, traditional Chinese uh, building. This uh, Man Ti Chao, Ancestor Hall, Mr. Man, Man Ti Chao, okay. It's a, it's a good guy, right? In, in Chinese history, famous. And the Ancestor Hall. Uh, the top left is the photograph, the, the right hand side is the laser scan, the bottom half is the, the architectural plan we produce on that. This is a requirement for the Antiquity Monument Office. Uh, we, deliver, uh, we deliver about 100 uh, architectural plan on that, like this. We even need to uh, sketch out the Chinese character of this uh, uh, heritage cultural uh, preservation project and the sport power of the ground and the step and the rooftop. Here is what I mean the uh, core mobile mapping system. 
when you put everything on a car, you can drive the car in maybe 50 kilometer, maybe even 100 kilometer, able to scan the whole city in that kind of quality. You can see the video there. The lower left hand side is is a is a UK example because I I'm the reseller of this system. We come from UK, so it follow the whole Hong Kong standard. Oh, in actual way, it's opposite. Hong Kong is for the UK standard. Okay, so it's a Hong Kong standard. You can see the double yellow line can be seen. The prep bottom and uh, top and low can be measured on the point count. So the journey, uh, or how about the water flow and the water <coughs> can be all mapped in this three uh, D point count. Even the super elevation of angle of the road, the bending angle, all can be measured. It not only use uh, one scanner, it's two scanner here, one in here, one in here, and they also put the uh, GNSS over there and camera. They can do it. Uh, as I say, on the ship, right, this is a ship top, uh, they put a UAV and then they can scan the whole forest like this. Because LiDAR is a very thin uh, light, so it can almost say penetrate to the vegetation. Because uh, even no matter how dense or vegetation is there or forest, there's a gap between two leaves or branch. So it can go through, penetrate into the, the ground so that you have the topography. Topography of the terrain that not able to measure by a normal surveyor like, like me. Yeah. So I, I almost have no job in future. <laughs> uh, in the hydrographic survey, uh, the new technology is that uh, we can have a laser scan flying on the sky, and the, if the laser is strong enough, it can penetrate the water and able to measure the, the underground, uh, so, so the seabed. Uh, profile of uh, clear water, not uh, not dirty water. It it because it relates to the reflectiveness of, of the transparency of the water, but it's feasible. The machine behind is the laser scanner, the navigation box with the GNSS, and sometimes we use for a real time kinetic uh, survey technology. That means even you are flying or moving, uh, the precision can be down to one centimeter on the sky. Okay, and the IMU, uh, the inertial motion unit, usually use it in a jet, jet flight, military jet flight technology, and now put it in here to understand the relative position or 3D vector movement uh, in, of, of the of the of the, of the flight. And uh, here is some mathematical formula explaining the new how it operates. It usually about uh, two, 100 to 200 meter flight height. And based on this uh, scanning frequency, scanning angle, and the flight height, we can able to measure how many point density are in per, per square before we plan the flight. And this is a typical example. Um, here is the laser scanner, and this is GNSS to do the positioning. And then I'm going to show you uh, some video. we capture from our vision system, uh, we create this uh, 3D point cloud uh, or mesh uh, of uh, one type, one track. And here is uh, happy ready, right? Yeah. So, uh, so you can see the mouse there, right? So it's not a photograph. I uh, try to repeat. It's a 3D model. It's based on the 3D point count, just like I explained. And from the 3D point count, we build a core triangular mesh. Uh, normally use it in uh, 3D gaming technology. Okay, it's like a Hollywood uh, rendering technique. So we have the 3D mesh. And in each mesh, uh, each facet, faces, we put the original program into it on, it on it. It's like a core texture mapping. So we put the texture on that. So we can uh, we can recreate the whole uh, city as like as the original quality, as like as not hundred percent. I can say maybe ninety percent. So so realistic that you cannot distinguish whether it's a video model or it's a helicopter filming technology. Okay. 
In natural hair, it's a quite old technology because in Hollywood filming, rendering, they have been using for the last 20 years. But they are not using it uh, for serving purpose, but I use it for serving purpose. Okay, so it's very good for presentation. Next one is uh, a, a 3D point cloud. Um, it's a real 3D point cloud in that central area. When I move, uh, the software will do a dynamic reduction of data. We call level of detailness. Okay, and then if I say rotate, it's a construction site here, and and because we cannot uh, assess the bridge, so we scan it uh, on the on the ground level. Yeah. But if you if we walk through uh, this way, um, the China Bank is almost uh, like a, a a photograph. So so realistic on this facade. I also want to uh, explain the limitation here. For example, uh, there's a window here, the black area. Uh, we cannot able to scan it uh, due to the limitation of collider technology. Uh, we cannot scan a uh, moving object like water. Water, if you scan water, you cannot have anything coming because it's noise. Because if the, the wind is breathing, then, then, then everything is moving. Of course, a human being, if you stop there, I can scan it. But if you are moving, I, I maybe have a half of your body, something like that. Okay, so there's, uh, I think well, the only limitation is uh, moving object and high reflectiveness uh, service are the limitation on that. Okay, thank you very much. My talk is standing here. Okay, Okay, thank you very much for Thomas' very inform informative uh, talk here. Yeah? Uh, actually, I've got some questions, but I leave it to the floor first. So, anybody want to um, just fly the first question to Thomas? Okay, yeah, if you can speak loud enough, okay? Uh, I'm, I'm curious about, how about the data storage, how to storage those millions of the photos to represent the cloud? Oh, very good question. Uh, are you a student? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, I better I call you three years ago. <laughs> so then can you, you can look after my data center. <laughs> yes, uh, we use, we eat up, I can not use up, eat up a lot of hard, hard disks. Uh, we bought about, uh, I don't know how many now. I better ask my staff. But for example, we buy a four terabyte hard disk. Okay, it's quite cheap now, right? But we can eat up within maybe a week to finish it. And the biggest project we tried in one day is we took about uh, 12,000 uh, photographs one day. And it took up about um, maybe, uh, maybe almost 100 gigabyte data on that day. Only the raw uh, photograph. And normally we will make a copy of it, right? Then it's 200 gigabyte <laughs> user. And I know you start the job, right? And then I run the job. From 100 gigabyte, I may uh, produce maybe 200 gigabyte data, and I, I, I need to make a copy again, again. So another 200 gigabyte gone, and I still not yet finish the project because we need to do iteration, right? It is ten time. So you can imagine how many hard disks are needed. So even the whole cloud system are not really able to handle in the long run. And I know. Um, uh, the China government also doing this technology. They say that the whole world is hard disk now, and they even not able to do a good archive. Meaning that sometimes we need to recall some project back, right? But if it is not online in, in the room of hard disk, it's like the whole library system, the book there, and then you need to search. So it's a big problem in, in human culture now. We have too many data now. I wanted to know if any of the road network data is available freely for any project work. Uh, yes, um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an example, uh, let me try to show you again. One of the projects we are still uh, ongoing or, or almost finished is this project. 
Um, because we already have the LiDAR scanning in this area and the UAV photograph, everything in 3D, so we have the road network in this area all in 3D now. Not only the road network, we have a per link information. If there's two link, then we have two line to represent it. If there's four link, we have four link to represent it. And in the junction, we're able to detect whether the road is turn left and turn right, and even take how long to do that turning, because we also capture uh, the, the statistic of the traffic flow. Not only that, the pedestrian information also uh, collect, and we also uh, create a call uh, uh, pedestrian or people flow network. So we have uh, a centre line along the pedestrian walkway, and also all the footbridge, all in 3D now. So the whole um, navigation modeling in the past is not possible to do this. And we normally do an uh, estimation, right? Or by uh, sample sample population survey. But nowadays, we can able to map the whole 3D real world into a 3D computer world with the pedestrian and the roadway all in one center database system. And have different navigation mode, uh, different core traffic mode, can be integrated in, in real time, I can say. Uh, so I predict that in the, in the coming future, all the cars will have GPS or GNSS system, and all, my, all human beings have the mobile phone, also have the navigation technology, that able to understand how the traffic flow and the human flow are interact in, in real time. And we should have this kind of system, have 3D data, 3D database behind and able to do that simulation or real-time monitoring or ad hoc decision making as called a uh, spatial information system. Anybody else? Uh, oh. okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I think I, my, my voice is fine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think uh, the presentation is very interesting, and uh, thank you very much. And uh, I have a question for that, uh, because uh, from my understanding before, all the 3D scanners are stationary. Yes. You just put there and they have a 3D uh, scanning. Yeah, traditionally. But, yeah, traditionally. But right now, uh, what you mentioned is that actually it actually can be carried on, uh, on, on a drone, yes. or can be carried by the car. Yes. But uh, how, 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 how is the accuracy when you have the moving object and then carrying, uh, checking the points, the coordinate? Okay. Because actually you are moving. Yes. So actually when you go outside and then go back and then you have the time difference, yes. then it may make the uh, coordinate have some kind of uh, difference. Yes. Uh, so the, just would like to know the technology here. Thank yes, thank you. Uh, very good question and very technical question. Um, at the beginning of uh, this uh, technology, uh, the instrument was put on the tripod uh, statically so that you know, it will not move, it should be leveled and we can scan the data up to say 2 mm. Uh, of course, uh, if I uh, come with uh, human error, maybe one more or two more millimeter, that's all. So the, the whole model is very, very precise down to millimeter level. When you move the object, then it depends on which uh, platform you are using, right? You can use a uh, UAV, the drone, you can put on a car, you can even uh, put in a rack set and then you can walk and you can do it uh, by bicycle or motor, motorcycle also can do it, even a ship, as I say. So any uh, vehicle can be used. Um, one of it is called unmanned aerial vehicle, right? We have also ground vehicle or marine vehicle. So it's explained the terminology was in UAV, uh, UMV, UGE. And in order to uh, predict or measure the movement of this instrument, uh, in open area, we use uh, GNSS. But not normal GNSS, we use uh, advanced GNSS. And the precision now can be down to one centimeter, even you're moving globally, no matter Hong Kong, uh, Macau, China, US, Europe, all can be in this standard now. Uh, we call it a uh, uh, geodetic, uh, real-time kinetic GNSS measurement. The height is a little bit lower, it's about 1.5 centimeters, and still globally. 
But if you are asking me uh, on a normal project, 1 to 200 scale, it all within the torus because the torus is uh, 2, two centimeters. But that 2 centimeters normally apply on uh, like building corner, not other things. Other things can be more relaxed, maybe 3 centimeters up to say 5 centimeters, it's still okay. So uh, it's totally acceptable or totally cover all the requirements in engineering survey. So it's so popular now that they make mainly on that. For indoor measurement, uh, there's a new technology called SLAM. Uh, it's very complicated. It's meaning that uh, we can scan a, a laser point cloud here. So I have a point cloud here, and I move one second later, and then I scan the point cloud again. And these two uh, point cloud have no relationship. It's just uh, the relative position we know it. And the scientists are able to uh, invent, already invent, an algorithm that it can match the common point of these two point cloud because they are overlap, maybe 90%. So we overlap, overlap, and then turn around, and then come back to the first position. And everything we call a closed loop, and we can do a call a D square adjustment. D square means uh, you take a square of all your error, and then you take a mean, and then you, you, you know the average of the root mean square error. And then you can solve the problem precisely, down to about, now they are about maybe 2 centimeters to 3 centimeters now. And it, it are uh, improving. And it also use it in robotic vision. Everything I talk to tonight is I'm already get into the robotic uh, engineering and AI uh, industry. And for robot, uh, in order to understand the environment before you move, you put a one step forward. You need to map that area in real time. So the LiDAR is the first choice. Uh, many Google like driverless cars are using LiDAR and also use a camera to do the same thing so they have that map to understand what the distance between you and me and you know to avoid collision all this is robotic uh, technology and robotic vision technology so um, the accuracy is increasing and it starts to centimeter level and some already millimeter level so it's a very promising technology and that's why i want to share with you all today okay. Uh, I've got one. Uh, sorry, uh, can I, 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 maybe I'm me. But okay, uh, Thomas. So uh, actually, it's very to be an engineer. I find it is quite useful. Is that you show a picture which showing that the um, the levels uh, of the wall, for example, and then the ground, and then the exact quite uh, the difference. Is actually the accuracy can be quite uh, quite high. Yes. Uh, what what is the technology behind that? You actually just take a photo, and then you can actually get. Such yeah. a high accuracy. Yeah. It's called photogrammetry, as I explained. Uh, we take a series of photographs. Each photograph has high overlapping, not only 50%, sometimes 80%, 90% overlap. And then, because it's taken in two different positions, so it has two different angles of view to the same object. For example, I'm looking at you now with one angle, but I step a little bit left, and then another angle watching you. And then I have two photographs, right? And these two photographs have overlapping on you. And then I can able to measure two angles, two uh, intersection measurement. So it's a geometry mathematical measurement on you. And then I'm able to know your position and, and distance. And if I have 100 of the program and still watching you, so the precision will be very, very high. The slide shows the construction site uh, layout. And some is showing the, the progress of the construction sequence. Yes. For the comparison purpose, how can you control the picture you take before and after? Because you're using uh, the aerial photo. Yes. How can you make sure that the drone is putting on the correct position? Or how many pictures you need to produce? And then after you do the analysis, create uh, uh, the final picture for the comparison. Oh, yes. Uh, also, steps, very good question. Know, statistic, uh, also very technical as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, in actual fact, uh, we cannot able to uh, revisit the same location down to say uh, millimeter level. Uh, what we did is that uh, every time we make that uh, photograph measurement, we create the data all uh, reference to the same coordinate system, like the Hong Kong coordinate system, the 1980, uh, compared to the government or we compile to the architectural plan. The architect, 
architect, you normally have their own grid system in the construction. So either case, but mostly we put in the absolute coordinate, the Hong Kong home coordinate system. And we control it by using the graph control point on the survey side. So we take the photograph on air, right? Or we do a laser scan. But each time we have the control point of the whole area, evenly distributed, uh, say maybe 10 points around the whole site even the distributor, and then we also measure that part in our computer model. So we are not only doing a model independently, we transform that 3D model without coordinate into the real world by this uh, 3D transformation. We tell the computer that this point, we already know the position in XYZ, second point XYZ, third point XYZ. In theory, we give three points, the whole model will be move, rotate in 3D, and then fix over there. But not, we are not only doing three point, we do four point or five point, even ten point as a redundance. You know, to minimize the error using call residual uh, approach. It, uh, to minimize the error of migration in the whole model, even in digital. So we simply just move the unknown the coordinate into a real world by the control point. We tie on the point and then we transform it precisely. And each time we are doing the same thing. So even I do it uh, many many times per, per week or per, per month, I use the same control point to control the result in the same coordinate. So because the same coordinate is fixed in the same location. But of course the, the ground object is totally changed. But the, the ground control point didn't change. We fixed it. That's why we can able to do things so precise and able to measure since we did. The point the is outside the control inside or uh, it can do both. It can be inside or outside. You know, to uh, avoid the destruction of it, uh, we normally put it outside. But sometimes if you want to make sure the model in the middle part is more precise, we will put the control part at that position. So we, we need to do some planning and analysis before we, we design the distribution of the control part. It's some technique in the lens of it. Some experience. Cool. Some yeah. Experience. Yeah. And also, sometimes we do call pre pre analysis on this uh, called uh, network control design. Okay. You mentioned that uh, <coughs> this technology that we use uh, in Beam. Yes. Model. Can you explain a bit more about that? Okay. Uh, Beam is uh, mean uh, building information model, right? Uh, Put in a simplest form or uh, description is that uh, traditionally architect uh, draw uh, design their building at a, at a CPU first uh, in a 2D CAD drawing, right? 2D plan. So each floor they have the floor plan and ceiling they have ceiling plan called reflective ceiling plan. Each wall they have called elevation plan, I mean uh, perspective. So each plan is 2D and they combine together and you understand the 3D uh, design of the whole building. But nowadays, government asking that no more 2D drawing. When you make a design, you make a 3D model using a software to do it. And the software, because it built in 3D, and it can uh, compress itself into a 2D drawing. It can automatically create a floor plan, a reflective ceiling plan, and elevation plan. Okay, so this is what BIM is. And not only the drawing is uh, in 3D, all the information attached to it should be entered. For example, this table is a wooden, they put wooden material. All the material put in, in the 3D model, and they can calculate the sum of boiler of the material used, and also the cost that suppose it's in one apart. That's why it becomes a project management technology and the rules now. All the project, more than 30 million, need to use BIM technology the standard to do it. So because everything is 3D, so if you are designed, it's easy, right? You, you draw a table and then I make it for you. But if the table already here and it's not designed for you, how can you make the 3D model of this uh, table, the step, or the whole electrical hall here? It's already exists, right? But maybe it's uh, 50 years ago, someone designed it. So how can you recreate the beam? You cannot ask the designer to come back and then do again or of course you can have a 2D drawing and then you create it bit by bit. But most of all, all the SQL objects are different from the design. 
maybe a centimeter different or maybe a meter different. Nobody knows. Except the last submission is really true compared to the F scale. But that's a, not the main point. It's because when you construct a new building now, you, you follow a beam to doing it, you will ask whether the contractor are really follow the beam, the 3D model doing this. The first thing is you're setting up. You need to 3D setting up now. In the past, it's a 2D map, and then you start to lens appear to do the setting up. But now we are facing not a pen, we are facing a PIM 3D model doing it. So in order to do it, nowadays we use a laser scan to scan everything on the site in order to understand where we are. And then we, we put the 3D uh, model, the beam, into our uh, total station, the 3D measurement instrument. And also put it in the laser scan so that we can compare whether our setting out is true or the s uh, wall or step are compared, compliant to, to the standard in the beam. So the main purpose is that how we can survey the thing in 3D. It's very difficult now. If it is in an urgent basis or in a chaotic environment in construction site, everything is pushing. For example, in Hong Kong, normally you can construct one floor by one week in most of the construction site. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very busy. So we cannot able to do it by traditional serving 500 pounds a day. You cannot finish your whole floor. So we use laser scan. And most of all, we cannot assess in the rooftop because they are putting the cement and they are tying the, the steel, reinforced steel, and they are having some wooden precast things doing that. No, no, no way for us to stand here for an hour to measure 500 points. So we use laser scan and the drum to solve the problem. So basically, I think you, what you say is uh, we use this technology to uh, check the tolerance yes. for the time. Exactly. But uh, my question is, um, so uh, basically we can, you, you can have to uh, use the scan uh, data transfer it to the beam model. This is not, uh, it's not automatic in, the moment, in this moment, right? Yes, yes, not okay. automatic now, all okay. by manual. Mm. Yes. But uh, it's, it depends on the Hong Kong technology. In Hong Kong, it's still yet like this. But in other overseas countries, they already have new algorithm to understand the point count and create a 3D model by the computer itself. For example, um, I know Google Earth, uh, you use Google Map, right? But in the Google, in the Google Map, it's already 3D. You can go into there and you can see Hong Kong in 3D. All the buildings created in Google Earth or Google Map are created by the technology I explained to you. But it's about maybe 10 years ago or 5 years ago. And then they create a new technology that they can understand which building is over where. And then they make the facade really in in a straight line or pen shape. And it cannot be created by hand like this, or the original model is like this. And because they're using some like AI technology to understand the shape of the building, and then they recreate the facade automatically. So this is what I try to explain. The beam model can be recreated like this, but not yet uh, in the market. It's a commercial market. It's a proprietary technology in Google. And some scientists did doing this successfully in some academic paper. And I know that. Because I'm tracking academic paper every week. So I know what's happening. But not yet in Hong Kong. Or before the talk, I check with you guys and I say, why not the student behind us can be the future of us to make some new program to do what you want to do or I want to do. I want to have quite a big in Hong Kong software. So I'm glad that we have so many students tonight to hear what I'm talking about. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Thomas. Uh, I think we have uh, fired a lot of questions to Thomas. So we are la the last one, maybe. Okay. Anybody want to la ask the last question? Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you for a very good presentation. Uh, as I know, uh, because the uh, uh, satellite image is quite uh, depends on the weather condition. Yes. And also, uh, yeah, I, my, I'm wondering that whether this kinds of the uh, 
uh, UA system uh, is uh, when taking this kinds of a picture is also affected by the weather condition, like uh, for example the windy condition and the sunshine condition. Uh, yes, exactly. Um, the satellite image was taken from about uh, 1,000 1, kilometers away uh, from the ground, so on the space. So uh, in tropical area like Hong Kong or anywhere near the equator, we have a lot of clouds in summertime, sometimes springtime or the, the only good uh, season in Hong Kong by my experience about uh, November, December and January, that's all. And otherwise, uh, most of the satellite image taken in Hong Kong, 90% have cloud. For UAV, uh, because uh, it flies very low, uh, in Hong Kong uh, uh, law, the CD law, it, we should fly within uh, 300 uh, feet. 300 feet is about, say, uh, 91 meter. So, 3 meter per 4, we talk about 30, 34 meters within 34, from the, the highest of it. And by this height, no more cloud. <laughs> so you can take any picture, any time in Hong Kong, by this low altitude with cloud-free image. So it solved the problem. Except there are some cases that I mentioned, and, but just by unfortunately, this, this topic, the, the paraglider was that, and um, we cannot find them. It's due to the, the cloud along the Dai Dong San, the Lantau Mountain. And I did fly the, the UAV, but uh, unfortunately, when we reach about 400 meters, and it's already cloudy. So uh, even the helicopter, the government flying service cannot find him. And after six days, they find him by chance because the cloud was started, started to disappear. So there's a problem, and I'm going to write some uh, information for the police in order to include it by using a new uh, low flight technology, lower than say uh, 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 100 meter. We can find maybe five meter above the tree by using called terrain follow uh, technology. Terrain follow means if we can survey everywhere in Hong Kong first with the 3D model terrain, tree, and building. We can put in our computer system and predefine the flight path following all the terrain, all the tree top and then all the wind top down to about 5 meter or 10 meter. So no matter there's cloud there, we can able to survey anywhere in Hong Kong in future. So it's a technology uh, idea and also rescue uh, new approach and maybe also good for engineering purpose. If you have a cloudy day, you need to monitor the site, how we do it. If we use this new technology, you still can able to monitor the construction site in a so low fly terrain follow technology. It replicate the missile launch uh, inventory field. They have the same technology to avoid the radar uh, to penetrate in the country. But I'm thinking in a commercial use. Thank you. Uh, can I have the last question? Okay, okay. okay. I just, just came up to my mind. Is that it's actually quite useful because uh, you are saying that with the ladder uh, technology, uh, the light can actually penetrate through the vegetation. Yes. Like uh, if you because before it's like it's very difficult if you get into a very heavily vegetated area. Yes, exactly. So is it is it's actually quite useful because you can actually check out all the terrain. Yes. But would, would that be accurate? Uh, it's same accuracy. Because um, the LiDAR is not only sending the signal once to the, the ground or in, into the forest. It has, uh, for, for a good one, it has a seven return coming back. For example, if we hit the, uh, the top of the tree, it already returned one signal. And then it continues penetrate into the forest and maybe hit the branch and it get another signal. We go and echo, second return. And then maybe hit a, a rooftop uh, of a house inside the, the forest and then you will return it as well and then we will hit the ground so the fourth echo or the second the fourth return we will represent the, the ground the third return we can represent the rooftop of the building the first and second will belong to the tree so all can be a uh, record and in the database of the one count and then we can filter that 
and we can filter the tree out, we can filter the, 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 the rooftop out, and then we become have the bare land. That's why it's so uh, hot in, in the whole world on this topic. It's because we put through anything that we cannot access in the past and able to understand the whole terrain before we plan how to have a new road get into there, how many trees to be cut, how, how many cut and fields to be uh, move out and move in before the budget quotation and estimation of the risk. Thank you, Thomas. Oh, it's almost 8.30. Okay. Um, okay, so if uh, there's no more question, okay, so can everybody join me to give a big clap to... Uh, Okay, so the last three items, okay, as usual, uh, I would like to invite our chairman of CHT, uh, Dr. Siak Chan, to present his uh, souvenir and appreciation to uh, Thomas, please. Okay, and then also we have a group photo, so can everybody just crowd around here and then we pull our big banner out and then we have a photo here. And then the last thing must be uh, certificates. Okay, so. So we are uh, Thomas Lee. Uh, please accept uh, my uh, sincere appreciation uh, to the outstanding uh, presentation you next to the CXT uh, Hong Kong region uh, tonight. Actually, it is a very interesting topic to me. And uh, thank you so much for sharing your, your time and experience with us. And as a token of our appreciation, I would like to present a certificate.